Hi everyone, Scott Minto here. I hope you're well and keeping safe during what is a very strange time in the world right now. Now I'm really pleased to be joined by the Walsall midfielder Stuart Sinclair for the EFL and Minds Inside the Mind of series for Mental Health Awareness Week. Stuart, how are you? First and foremost, how's the beard? Same <laughs> length or longer? Uh, yeah, no, it's not too bad. Uh, obviously, there's no barbers at the minute open, so... Um... It's slowly growing. I did actually trim it um, a uh, a little while ago, but I, 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 I'm very nervous because I, I don't want to hash it up. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 there. It's it's um doing its its uh, its own thing. <laughs> Thank you. How do you keep it normally? I mean, do you have it trimmed normally? Do you, do you yeah, it very, very, do very occasionally. Very occasionally. Um, uh, as you can tell, like I'm not I'm not one for the 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 hairdressers, so. Uh, yeah, very occasionally I'll trim it. Um, I've got a good friend in in uh, Bristol who I uh, who I still go down and see, but it's not it's not very often. Um, but yeah, it's kind of become part of me now. To be honest, I've I've always kind of had long hair, but um, yeah, my beard's become part of me in the in the last few years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. How are you dealing with the lockdown? And who are you with at home? Uh, just my partner. Um, uh, she's just finishing, she's uh, doing a university degree at the minute and she's literally just finishing her dissertation now. So it's quite a stressful period for her actually um, because she usually um, would, she would usually study and do her dissertation and her work in, um, at the library at, at the university because she finds that that's a good space for her to, to kind of set herself and, and, and be active in that. But obviously at this period, the, the university shut, so she's been having to do it at home. So it's, that's been a, a, a stressful time for her. So basically I've just been trying to support her and help her as much as I can and um, create an environment where she can, she can, she can um, do that. Cause obviously it's been a, she's been doing it for three years now. So it's been quite a big part of our life. So um, yeah, so but pretty much been doing that and then just trying to keep a routine and, uh, get up at a, a set time and, and go to bed at a set time and uh, keep myself how, up. How hard is that? Yeah, oh, it's so tough, isn't it? Because uh, I'm quite an early riser, but since this this um, since this has taken place, it's, I've had to really work hard to not to go. My, my other half, my partner, she's uh, a night owl, so she'll she'll she likes to stretch the time. In the evening and I prefer to get up in the morning so it's kind of like a lock ahead so but it's more important that she she does what she needs to do at the minute so uh, I'm definitely going to bed later and getting up later so yeah. yeah I was going to ask what are the bad things what are the good things but it sounds like you summed it up there you've got to condense your day together into the sort of afternoon period yeah 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 well, is, it, is it right you grow plants as well or you certainly yeah, like yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I yeah yeah this is my conservatory actually and in my conservatory I've got loads of house plants and I've got some tomatoes growing and uh, some chilies and basil and I've, I've got some dahlias growing so uh, yeah I, I, I like gardening I, I find that's a it's a it's a nice thing to kind of focus on um, because football is quite an emotive um, situation and, and uh, um, it's obviously performance driven so it's nice to be able to kind of come away from that and uh, when I'm gardening, I kind of it allows me to kind of just focus on that or, or as such. Like a, any hobby, I suppose, is like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I've been I've been doing quite a bit of gardening, and I just uh, built a back gate. So I was do, I was doing I've been doing that for a few days and stuff. So yeah, I've, I've been trying to stay kind of occupied as such. What about yourself? Well, I, I feel a bit bad in saying this actually because um, we've done some interviews with, with Sky as well as for for EFL and Mind, and mm -hmm. some sometimes I ask, you know, have you done an activity that you have never done before, you haven't done for a very long time. And my one is actually mowing the lawn. <laughs> really bad. It's been probably 25 years since I mowed the lawn. <laughs> and now I've done it a few times. I've had to borrow next door's lawn mower. Oh my God. Very good with that. But yeah, it's, it's kind of a little bit surreal in terms of why, why has it been so long since I did it? It's not actually that bad. But then I feel bad <laughs> about the garden that we have and I want him to keep on having a job as well. So... I mean, is there, any, is there anything that you um, have started up that's, that, that perhaps you haven't or you haven't done for a very long time? I, I know you're, is it right, you're quite into woodwork as well? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I like, yeah, I've probably, actually, that's probably one thing that I've probably done more since the, since the um, kind of this whole thing that's 
kind of taken place. Um, I've probably done more of that actually because you, it, I kind of had a little bit more time. Um, obviously, in terms of not having to travel to Warsaw as much and stuff. So I've, I've um, yeah, I've probably done a bit more of that. Um, but I wouldn't say anything really that I've kind of done that's new. I'm trying to think. Um, but yeah, no, I've I, I, I kind of always tried to. Uh, have other interests than, than football because I, 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 I always um, when well, a, a little while ago a few years back I was very very driven because I, I was probably never the most talented p person as, as, a, as a footballer uh, um, so I was always uh, acutely aware that um, I had to work really really hard and I probably got too driven in that aspect and everything was focused on that and everything around my whole world was football and everything was driven towards that my food my diet uh, my mental health everything was driven and, and that was my pinnacle and I worked really hard to get to, to kind of uh, uh, playing at the level I have and and when I got there I kind of realized that it was going to end and then I, I wouldn't have any do you know what I mean I wouldn't have anything else so I then worked a bit harder on kind of taking up interests that I enjoyed doing, but weren't really didn't really matter in that in that football bubble that I had at the had at the time. So uh, yeah, so I've got a, probably got three or four interests that I that are outside of football that I I um, try to do as much as possible to help me to give me routine to to support me as well as such. Um, yeah. I think, I think everybody's different, aren't they? Some feel they need to live it 24-7. I was someone that, that, even from a mental point of view, needed to just get away and, uh, and do something different. I, I actually was quite lazy when I was a player, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, finding something that's therapeutic and just takes you your mind off. Focus, you focus all of, your, all of your, your whole world into football then when you played? I, I didn't, I didn't. I, 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 I did... I mean, I look back now and I think perhaps I should have done a little bit more. Um, but then I also was, was watching um, a vodcast with Steve Harmison and Freddie Flintoff. And mm -hmm. Steve Harmison was saying, you know, Nasser Hussain would say, did you reach your potential? And Steve Harmison turned around and said, well, I actually say, do you know what? I loved my career. I look back and everything that I did... Perhaps I could have been a little bit more professional, but everything I did, I really enjoyed and, and I have no regrets for that. So I think it's very important for the person themselves to think, what do I want out of my career? Mm. I think you can have a, a combination of the two, mm. but I think, you know, there were times in my career where I was like you with your time and you can be totally driven, but then it's on your mind all the time and you're thinking to yourself, am I actually enjoying life mm. yeah, here, yeah, let, yeah. let alone football? Yeah. Um, so I think that's you know personally I think it's really good to try and get a balance and it sounds like you have. Yeah, yeah. I've worked. I definitely have worked harder in the last um, maybe two years to to try and create a balance. Um, I think uh, uh, I met my partner four years ago, five years ago, and she definitely helped as well because I, I, I'm uh, um, not any social, but I'm not that social as a, as a, I'm, I'm kind of um, introverted type person. I, uh, I don't have a massive kind of circle of friends and all that kind of stuff. So um, I can I can become quite, I suppose, reclusive in, in that way. And I think when back then I, I was probably, I kind of just literally football was everything. Everything was focused on football. And maybe I didn't kind of uh, um, push myself in any other way. Whereas I think now, yeah, I think I've probably got a better balance in, in that way. But I think also you grow and you learn that, don't you, as well? Um, I think... I, I, as as you get older and you kind of grow more, especially in your twenties, I think you you and obviously your your major part of your career is then is you 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 do learn and and kind of figure things out as such, don't you? So I definitely think, um, yeah, the balance is the definitely the balance is there. And I, and, and my mum would say the same because I think um, I talk to my mum quite a lot about uh, my mental health and how I. Um, kind of figure things out and structure things with, with football and my, my family, quite a big support network. And um, I think she would definitely say now I'm, I'm, I'm more rounded as a, as a, as a person, which is, which is probably a, a good thing. Yeah. Definitely a good thing. I will come on more into the mental health side of it. I just want to talk to you about growing up. I mean, you're a very competitive midfielder now. Uh, <laughs> people know, people know you uh, and not just because of the Thank beard you. and the hair. <laughs> Uh, but growing up, who did you look up to 
and who did you want to be? Uh, I, I, I think my, uh, my, I was born in 87. I think my earliest memory would be uh, the um, Italia 90. So, and you, and you know that whole, that whole scene of Lineker and Gascoigne and I had it on, uh, I had it on a VHS tape and uh, the, like the, the emotion that you could see in, um, in Gaza was, it's, it's, I don't know, it just, it's, it, it's like it, it, uh, it penetrates you almost. And, uh, and you're the first fan as well, aren't you? The family is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My whole family are Tottenham. My, 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 uh, my parents were born in North London. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're all Tottenham. Like two of my brothers have season tickets. So they still, they still um, go. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think that, that, that just that scene, I can imagine that scene and the, and the emotion in that scene. And I think uh, anyone you see who has that emotion in, in what they uh, shares that kind of emotion ac ac across such a broad spectrum in anything they do, whether it's um, playing football or, 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 or whatever occupation you have. Uh, I think that kind of grabs you, doesn't it? Um, and uh, yeah, that scene, man, that's, it's, 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 uh, it still gets you, doesn't it? Yeah, so. It certainly does. Um, fantastic scene. I remember 1990 I was a little bit older than you it makes me feel really old to say that here that you were born in 87 <laughs> in the FA Youth Cup final against Coventry uh, in 87 three days later Coventry played who in the FA Cup final Spurs 3-2 yeah so I remember that and also I, I played against Gaza I remember Did you really? playing, yeah I remember playing um, Charlton was my first club so came through the youth ranks, got into the first team at 17, was a regular 18, and we were then playing in the top division. I remember playing at White Hart Lane. I was left midfield at the time. That's amazing. And, yeah, and uh, I went on a little mazy run, and then it was a rubbish shot, right foot shot. Eric Torsford <laughs> saved it easily. But clearly they sort of thought, right, I'm going to watch yeah. out for this kid. Yeah. Pat Vandenhell, <laughs> elbow, off the ball, way. blood everywhere. Gaza comes up, picks up the ball. He, he's just looked up. He's got the ball. He's doing his skills. He stopped, picked up the ball, looked at me, told the ref to go over and stop the game and look after this kid. Because he must have known what had happened. But again, he didn't have to do something like that. And um, I was very good mates with Ian Walker as well in the England of 21s. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was one time we, we, we saw Gaza with his family on holiday and you feel a bit sheepish, but obviously Walks knows Gaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes up to him and Gaza says, come and sit down, come and sit down. There was three of us sitting down with Gaza and his family. This was 1991, so it was after 90. Oh, God, uh, in, yeah. In Portugal. Um, absolutely amazing. So complete legend on, on and off the pitch in terms of how good a person he is. Um, I mean, let's 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 carry on talking about Spurs then. I mean, what, what do you make of them right now? Uh, I think it's an interesting. It's a really interesting period, isn't it? Um, I think it's kind of like a. It's tough. It's tough. It's obviously changing, isn't it? Obviously, after Poch, who had such a massive effect um, for uh, Mourinho, is such a massive character, isn't he? But to 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 change. It's gonna take. It's gonna take time. It's gonna. It's like anything, isn't it? It's just whether it, he gets that time, which I'm sure he will. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's it's an interesting period. It's very um, obviously you've got um, some great players as well that have have grown through the system, and now you're in that period where are you going to keep hold of them? Are they going to go on to uh, maybe say the top two or however you want to look at it? Even though Tottenham are pushing for that, I, I would I would say. But um, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 oh, yeah it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough. It's it feels tough. like we could go on for hours about Spurs, but let's talk about you and, and Walsall as well. Uh, how would you sum up your season personally and and the teams as well? Uh, it's, it's it's been interesting. It's um, it almost takes me back to when I first uh, joined Bristol Rovers. Um, uh, the, the 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 Walsall team's full of good young young footballers and. Um, I think as a as a young footballer, the most important thing is is consistency. Um, I think as a young footballer, you, it, it's it's very hard to be consistent. And I, and I think back when I was younger and, and when I had my um, scholarship at Luton and I got released, I probably wasn't consistent enough and produced enough to be able to push forwards into a into a first team kind of scenario as, as such. And um, I still I was still very um, uh, young. I, I was very light and I. I had all these different things going on so um 
I think for a young player, the consistency is the key. And, I, and we have quite a young side. And, and the more league games and the more games we play, I think we're growing. So that's, that's, been, that's been really amazing and, be, and been really nice to be involved in and watch um, and hopefully be able to help. Um, we've got some great, great, great um, young footballers. And, and, it's a, and it's an exciting period for the, for the football club, certainly. Yeah. yeah, and with Daryl Clark as the manager, he's certainly a manager who likes you. He's, he's bringing you everywhere he goes, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I've, I, I've worked with the Gaffer for a very, very long time, and I think I think um, he's really, really helped me, trusted me, and 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 grown me in in, in a, as a footballer and as a person as well. I would probably say. Um, so I have. Uh, uh, I like to think I'm quite a loyal and uh, loyal person, and and um, I like to think I would try and do as much as I could for him to 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 help and progress also as a football club um so yeah so yeah yeah it's good yeah yeah popular at Walsall cult here at Bristol Rovers as well how important do you feel the relationship is for for, for you and the fans yeah I, th I think I've I, I've been I think I've been extremely fortunate to be honest I, I I was very lucky that when I went to Bristol Rovers uh I, I think I just hit it at the right I was there at the right period and I kind of grew as Bristol Rovers grew from from what was um just before a, a hard period for the club, so I think um, that those two relationships kind of moulded and it kind of grew together, which um, which is, was an amazing experience. I, I loved it, and I made some cracking friends, not just on the, uh, the the football lads, but some friends that are just that were, that were supporters and and because I'd, I'd never been to Bristol before. And, and I, as you know, like as a footballer, you, you go to some place and you've never been there before. I've never been to Bristol before. And it's an amazing city. It's full of um, uh, uh, amazing art and culture. And it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool city. Um, so I was, I, I was just like they amalgamated and it just blossomed. So it was, a, it was, a, it was an amazing, uh, it was an amazing period in my career. And, and uh, likewise, likewise with Walsall, really, I, I, it's, it's kind of, um, Kind of been a been a whirlwind uh, this this last season, and I've really enjoyed it. And um, I think the 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 um, the relationship between the the players and the community is such an important thing. I think it 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 really can push the club forwards. And sometimes it's kind of forgotten, or maybe I don't know, maybe not forgotten, but it's kind of it's maybe on the back burner, or not ultimately the main thing but I think if you can make it that and you can make it a, a community I think it just drives the club forwards and I think that's what that's what ultimately happened at Bristol Rovers and I think that's what the gaffer's a massive part of that and he tries to do that um, and, and that's one of the aspects that I really enjoy work, like working with him is for, for that for one, for one of those aspects yeah. Clubs nowadays so good in the sense that they don't just have the it's not about the 90 minutes match experience mm. it's about a whole day's experience isn't it and the community side of things very important I think fans don't always realize the crucial role that they play during those 90 minutes how much they can help you and feel like you're a yard quicker or actually sometimes make you feel like you're running in treacle because you know, you're low in confidence um yeah for sure so you probably experienced it more than me because you probably played in front of more more people that we Unfortunately, to be able to play in, in front of people, but obviously those the guys who played at the t who play at the top, they're just in front of thousands and thousands of people and stuff. And so, but yeah, just the, the experience I have, it, I, yeah, you're quite right. I don't think that the, the supporters truly understand the effect that they have and, and the, the the drive. And, and um, if you think about it, if, if if you was to be doing something else, and then you had like three, four, five, fifty thousand people cheering you on. It, how it does? It's obviously going to affect you. you know? So, I think yeah, I think you're right. I don't think they do truly, truly realise. Uh, yeah. What, what have been? I mean, look, still plenty of, of years to go. I'm sure you, you're a personal trainer, weren't you, before uh, yeah. professional? So, I'm sure your fitness. You go on to past thirty five. I'm, I'm sure. But highs <laughs> so far and lows so far. Uh, my my highs. Um, prop, I would say my. I don't. I don't know if I. My high is just being a professional footballer. I think. I think everything that that has involved. I worked so hard to get there, and and now I look back. I, I used to actually before I said I was. I was with um, when I was a kid. I was uh, John Moore used to used to be one of our coaches, and he used to say. 
as a, as a professional footballer, you should never look back on your career whilst you're in your career because you can get a bit comfortable. And I always thought that was quite an interesting period. So I try not to dwell on successes or failures because they can um, change in, in, in that way. So, but yeah, I think probably just being a professional footballer is, 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 is a high. And then promotions and stuff like that that I've achieved are amazing. And um, the, the, like you say, the, maybe the relationship I've had with the supporters at the clubs I've been at is probably an, a, a, an achievement I, I see and I hold close to my heart, um, for sure. Uh, and then the, neg the, the negative experiences I've had are probably injuries and, and uh, how I've had to kind of deal with those injuries. And especially in the first few years, I can remember at Gateshead away, with, uh, for Bristol Rovers uh, I did my medial ligament I'd just come back from a fractured foot and, and, and I was, I'd just been I'd been in the uh, it'd been 30 minutes about 30 35 minutes gates head away and I, I went over the top of someone and I did my medial ligament and I, I knew we were going to get promoted and I also knew that that was my season finished <laughs> and I was just I cried the whole way off the pitch because I'd worked so hard to get into the football league and we were so close, and then those last 15 games, or however many are, uh, were left, I, I was going to miss that period, and I, I just cried. That, that was a tough period. I, I cried, yeah, I cried the whole way off the pitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, going on further from that then, how, how tough was that in the, the subsequent weeks, and, and how did you deal with the mental aspect of that? Uh, it was it was yeah it was extremely challenging to be honest. I'm fortunate that I um, I've got a really close family. So so my brother, one of my all my brothers have played football. All of them played football at a high level when they were when they were younger. And uh, um, the brother under me, Rob, he's uh, Rob. He's played professional football. And uh, I think my my parents. Uh, because we've played professional football and my dad was involved in football a little bit, um, he kind of understood the, the the challenges that a footballer might face in terms of injury. So I was I was very lucky that I had a really close support network. And I think obviously that's a major point in, in, in mental health and, and people who experience mental health. And maybe people who are on the outskirts of experience men, experiencing mental health to have support networks and to have people that you can truly trust and, and that... Um, you can share like kind of mutual things that 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 you're not gonna be almost maybe maybe ashamed or j j something that maybe you think you might be judged upon or, or such. Um, I think that really helped. Like my mum really helped me. And I'm, I'm as as a as a footballer who just moved to Bristol. Like we were talking about, I had I had no one. I had my my football friends who who really helped me as well. And that, and. Uh, and I, I was single at the time. I, 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 I didn't have a family and such. So I, I, I went home and, and uh, I basically just sat there for a while and kind of contemplated uh, what, what had happened. But I, um, uh, there, there was a, a good Heath Ledger, who, who is a, who's an who's a interesting actor who, who sadly is not with us anymore. He, he, um, he's, he spoke about... He had this really cool quote that my mum sent me. It was like um, about being happy and about making sure that when you, when you talk to people, you ask them if they're happy or not, not about things they have or material things or all these kind of things, but just whether they're happy. And I think I tried to push that into, into periods like that and be like, right, well, I'm still happy. I'm still okay. Everything's good. And, and um, it all changed around. Yeah. So. Brilliant. I mean, it's, it's just fascinating listening to you, Stuart. I mean, does your previous experience help you cope and support others, do you feel, or, or, or not? Yeah, um, yeah I, 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 I just try, I do try to, 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 do, to, to, to do that. I think, as, like what we just spoke about, as you progress through your career, you experience different things and, and um, go through different challenges. And, and for sure, I still now... Uh, a few weeks back, I was I was um, I was speaking to the gaffer, and I was emotional, and and uh, in a period where I I just come out of a, an injury, and I was um, 
I was maybe in maybe in a little bit of a negative mindset and we discussed about it and spoke about it. I'm still very emotive in that way, especially when I'm around around football. Uh, it kind of still presses all the all the all the buttons and such. So um, I try to now, like you say, like I try to help the younger lads, and and I think that's why I've enjoyed it so much at Walsall because um, it's not just maybe about um, me and the focus that I had on my career, but being able to maybe share that with with others. We've got a young lad who's 18, Alfie Bates, he's a, trem- he's a tremendous talent and uh, he's he's obviously negotiating all that kind of stuff at the minute and he he's um, he's going to be a tremendous footballer and so hopefully I can help people and, and support people like, like, like himself, yeah. What, what advice would you give uh, people who are, who are struggling right now in, in the lockdown? Uh, whether, it be, whether it be talking, I know uh, Mind have a campaign of, of have you mates back, uh, physical activity, finding a new activity, you know, any, anything like that. I think that, that, that um, Heath Leisure quote is amazing. I think that's, that's, that's a perfect thing for the, the campaign have you mates back. Like, it, it just ask your, ask your friends if they're happy or not. Irrelevant of irrelevant of everything else, like everything else is almost irrelevant if they're not happy. Uh, and obviously, we go through periods where we're happy and not happy. Uh, we we go through all these emotions, don't we, on a daily basis almost. But um, I think I think that is a, is is one of the most key factors is 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 making sure you're happy. And if you're not happy, are you are you moving towards that uh, as such? I mean, and and the support network you have around that can definitely help you in, in that way. Cause it, 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 someone who you, who you truly trust might have a completely different perspective to the, to the, to the, to the way you perceive stuff. Like my, like I was speaking about my mum, she, she, I was so focused on football and everything was about football, but she was like, yeah, but it's just, just football. And she's always been like that. But like, obviously of our house is made of my family's house is, is made up of um, it's expanding quickly now because all my brothers are having children. But they're, they're, I've only got brothers and obviously my dad. So there was there was six of us in our household when we were children, and um, it was just my mum on her own. So she always uh, was. Uh, <laughs> she never said it very much, but as we've got older, she's always like, "Yeah, but it's just football. You, you'll be okay." Do you know what I mean? And I think that's that's a. Uh, it's good to have different perspectives in 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 that way, isn't it? I think. Definitely. When you're caught up in that bubble, though, it is easy to think it's all about that. And of course, you want to be the best you can be in whatever you do. But sometimes it needs your mum to tap you on the shoulder or, or just someone close, whether it be a friend or a family member. Yeah. Yeah. And say, do you know what? Actually, let's look. Like an info, like the info line or anything like that, just to have someone who is there for you to help you and then to give you maybe a different perspective and something, a, a moment of clarity outside of your kind of bubble. I think, that, I think that's a, a good way to put it, yeah. How do you feel about being an ambassador for Mind? Oh, I think it's an amazing, just, just an amazing, just an amazing thing. I, I, I feel truly honoured that they asked me. I, it's funny, uh, being an ambassador is a, is a weird thing because I, I, I've worked with a, a um, uh, an NHS mental health charity called Recovery Through Sport uh, in Bristol, and that's up in Bristol, and they do some amazing things as well. It's fairly similar, in, in but maybe different in scale. Um, but they do they do like run a weekly football scheme and um, really help people who experience mental health problems. And and the people who run it, J- Jacob and Bob, they're they're um, NHS a part of the NHS and they share their experiences and stuff and so it's, it's an amazing thing and they call me an ambassador as well and I always think but it's all, all all I'm doing is kind of just I don't know helping like I, 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 yeah I, 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 yeah it's just an amazing thing I think to be called that is an, is an amazing and to be uh, to be part of something so cool and so special and so kind of moving forward forefront almost that um, I think that's it's, it's an honour isn't it uh, yeah it is whether you like it or not you're a role model first and foremost for what you do people do look up to you and then as you say when you have those kind of feelings that you want to help others um you can see why people like mind and 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 other uh charities would would want you to be a part of that especially the way you come across Stuart as well i mean how important do you feel mental health awareness is in football 
you know, in, in general, but also amongst football fans, because it has been in the past very much a, you know, we're talking about talking to Danny Cowley early and he was saying oh, in the past it was seen as, as a weakness. Now it's seen very much as a strength, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, for sure Scott. I, th I think, yeah, there was definitely like maybe, yeah, a, 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 a stigma around it or, or, or such. But I think uh, mental, mental health and experienced mental health can be also a pos a, a, not just a negative, or it can be a positive as well. Because if you can be in charge of that and, uh, and understand it, I think it can drive you forwards as well. And I, and I think people are becoming, uh, uh, are starting to realise that, that, that it, it's not a muscle, but it's one of the most, it's the most important vessel in your body, isn't it? As such. So being able to understand it and, and um, move it, uh, move it forwards and develop it, I think definitely is, is, is a positive. Um, and I think, I think everyone knows that, the stat about the, the leading cause of death in, in men under 50 is, is suicide. And, and obviously that is linked to um, mental health experiences and stuff. So, I, I, so I think obviously the, it's, it's a huge, it's, a, it's just a huge thing that, that, um, that is, that we make, make it aware and stuff like that. So yeah, I, de I definitely think it's important. I've said this before, I've got a, a very close family member who has prostate cancer and obviously oh. prostate cancer is a big thing as well. And in, a few years ago, I used to wear the badge, but now, and I have been for the last year or two, wearing the mind, because I, I'm like you, I think that the mind is such a powerful thing. You can have all the money in the world and still not be in the right place mentally. It's, it's irrelevant, isn't it? It's about how that is, and, and you're right. Are you happy? Yeah, it's that, it's that quote, isn't it? It doesn't matter. The outside what... looking in, people, people might think you've got everything. It doesn't mean to say you're happy. Yeah, it does. It honestly, it, yeah, yeah. That's such a, that's a such a good way to put it. It doesn't matter what you have. If you're not happy, then it, it's all irrelevant, isn't it? It's, it all doesn't. It doesn't matter. No, it yeah. doesn't. No, no. How, how important do you feel as a partnership like the EFL with Mind? Uh, yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Because I think um, football's so emotive and so important to so many people, and 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 probably the balance is still leaning towards men, although women are becoming more and more involved, and that's amazing uh, in its own right. Um, but like that stat, isn't it, of, of, of unfortunately, that is probably a broad spectrum of, of people and supporters you come to watch. So being able to put across that message and make people aware that there is support and there is networks. And I think what we, broke, what we spoke about a little while ago with, with um, the community thing, uh, as a football club, especially, especially I think for lower leagues and in the EFL, um, having a community and having us all in it together, um, such a strong, such a strong thing. I think obviously, as um, the Premiership has grown and become so, so big, it's so vast and it? it's it's almost um, touching the whole world now. But I think as of as as Walsall Football Club in in League Two that was founded in I think it was eighteen eighty eight and and has a strong structure and a strong community um, still now. I think having us all together and being able to support each other is an amazing thing. And I think the EFL Mind Partnership really does um, kind of bolster that and and help it um, and and can only act as a positive that we can kind of spread the message and and be on the forefront of trying to push mental health and, and um, kind of giving, maybe giving people ideas and giving people, like, my structure in professional football helps me and gives me kind of um, a focus in my day-to-day -day life. And I think that can help, obviously, other people. And hopefully if they can hear that experience and it helps even one person, that's an amazing, an amazing thing, isn't it? It certainly is indeed. And you, you kind of half-answered my last question, but I'll just ask you, to sum up and conclude, what would your advice be to people who, you know, especially at this particular time at the moment, are struggling a little bit mentally? I think to, uh, to first of all, take a deep breath and just just kind of settle yourself. And, and then second of all, to kind of think if there is someone in your support, in, in your network, who can give you, a, a, um, help you or give you a different perspective and, and kind of support you, even if that's just through text message or and it's tough now, isn't it? Because we don't have that kind of, as such kind of, um, we are, we can talk face to face like we are, can't we Scott, but we can't touch anything. We're quite tactile, aren't we? So uh, can't have that support type network. So I think just maybe being able to have someone who you can lean on and, 
and whether that's a whether that's a friend or whether that is mind's info line or 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 going to one of um the mind community things that they've set up um there is there is help out there and and uh even if that means contacting the football club and the community because most football clubs now have really strong community um offices going on and whether it's maybe trying to contact them and and, and, and talking that way but just kind of maybe reaching out I think that's I think that's the main thing that I'd like to say and and, and uh, yeah ho- hopefully hopefully um, everything everything will, will, will work out won't it and just remember that quote that just just to try and be happy mm-hmm. I, think that's it. I think that's it a good thing don't worry about all the kind of all the jargon in, in on the left hand side think about it do you know what I mean yeah. Great conclusion, Stuart. Listen, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate and really enjoyed talking to you as well. Good luck with everything and, and hope to see you back on the pitch soon. Remember, if you need any further information or advice, visit mind.org.uk. Thank you.